I was trained as a classical biological oceanographer. I started doing the work as a graduate student on this project. What's changed from when I was trained to now is the robots have arrived. It's a technology revolution that's opening the door. And it's literally going to change the way we look at the Southern Ocean. The polar oceans are incredibly important for the global ocean circulation. And so when you warm these areas, you alter that circulation. What we're seeing is in a lot of these polar seas in the Antarctic, and especially in the West Antarctic, is a dramatic warming. In my professional career, I'm watching an Antarctic ocean transition to a subpolar system along the West Antarctic. It will change the circulation, it'll change the formation of sea ice, and those two things will dramatically change what life is living there and what life can live there. And that's what we're documenting. So now I can have swarms of robots measuring everything from the physics, the chemistry, all the way up to the food web. And now we have sensors that'll tell me about the physics, the temperature, the salinity, the currents, the waves. And that will essentially allow me to understand how they're all interacting. The ocean plays such a huge role in climate, and it's like an area of the world that's so huge that we still don't understand. The gliders especially, they're incredibly important tools to really understanding how the climate system works. All of the gliders have a CTD, which measures uh, conductivity. Conductivity tells us about the salinity of the ocean, temperature and depth. And you can really see um, how the atmosphere and the ocean interact. And that's, that's really the most important thing. And I mean, that's kind of how climate change is working. There's feedbacks between these big reservoirs, the atmosphere and the ocean. Antarctica is not um, often a very calm place to work. Um, conditions can be very variable. Um, we were on the ship and we saw uh, conditions change in a matter of minutes. From relatively calm to extremely rough. Oh! Having those sensors down there that are making those measurements through all those really difficult conditions gives us data that we simply haven't had before. You know, that's respectable by some ocean standards, but not by WAP standards. But when we got in here, we were getting in the 30s. Yeah. Not having that data during those storms limits our ability to understand what's happening. And so robots give us that opportunity. That's some skill. The technology is evolving so rapidly. And if you just think of wireless networks and how we all work now, it's now translating to this kind of science. With these smart networks and the data being a data stream to any computer in the world over the web, in real time, we get more eyes on the problem. I think it's much more important for more people to look at the data than me hoard it and become famous because I wrote one or two papers that 12 people read. The changes are so dramatic. It's a canary in a coal mine in my view of how polar systems might change 
in the coming decades. And so we need to have lots of people from all persuasions able to surf and bring their own brain capacity to the problem. And that's what's going to change. And that's what the robots are going to let us do. This is how we welcome every glider home. Usually it's Dave. That's why they call him the glider whisperer.